Hey guys, in my previous two update videos, I've gotten feedback on how the size of my heads were different in the before and after pictures, and it wasn't a fair comparison. So this time, I was careful to use the position of my eyes, my ears, and also the moles on my face as guidelines to produce a more precise before and after comparison. A few things to note here. Number one is the picture quality of the 2020 photos are much better quality because I'm using a much better camera and also some artificial lighting. So that's going to affect how my features show up. For example, in this frontal view, my cheekbones look a lot more popping and I think that's probably due to the lighting. The pictures are also photoshopped. I cropped out the before and overlaid it on top of the after picture. And I also smoothed out my skin and faded out my acne scars so that it's not going to be distracting in the comparison process. But obviously the shape of my features have not been altered. The difference I observe in the front of you is that other than the fact that I look more alive, which I think is mostly due to the lighting, I also think that my face looks wider, and I actually measure the width across my cheekbones and also my jawline in Photoshop, and it's actually the same, uh, but just somehow it looks wider. And on the right side, I think the tilt of my head is different, so I'm not going to count the reduction of my double chin here, but my jawline does look more visible here. And on the left side, the angle of the picture was a little bit different, but the tilt of my head is very similar. And I do see a reduction in my double chin. And looks like the hump in the back of my neck has also been reduced. Hey guys, how's it going? So around the same time last year, I started my mewing journey. And the reason I started making videos about it is because Number one, I wanted to bring more awareness on this topic. And number two, I just wanted to share my experience with the community in a way that is truthful, in a way that you guys can trust. And now it's been a year, and in this video, I'll be talking about the changes that I have observed and also what I think of mewing a year later. <laughs> So number one is I have removed my lingual wire and retainers throughout this year. At first I was going to say that it's all rainbows and sunshine after removing the retainers and the lingual wire. But after taking this footage, I realized that my bottom two front teeth have shifted forward a little bit. So I immediately put on my retainers after three months of not wearing it. And the good thing is it still fits, although it's a bit tight. I think having retainers is not very helpful for mewing because it will just revert any changes you try to do with mewing. But I think lingual wire can be a good in-between solution that keeps your front teeth straight while allowing for changes in your back teeth. This is just my speculation based on my personal experience and it's not meant to be used as prescription. So the second change I have made is to shift my tongue further back. In the beginning of my mewing journey, my tongue used to be in contact with my front teeth and that was actually very bad because the tongue can actually put pressure on your front teeth and thereby giving you an overjet in the teeth. And then halfway through the year, I realized that I wasn't supposed to do that. So I kind of trained my tongue to go further back. And uh, in the beginning, that was definitely difficult because it took more effort to lift up the root of my tongue. After some time, eventually I got used to it and now the tip of my tongue would be maybe one centimeter away from my front teeth. And the third change I have made is two, three months ago, I started exercising more regularly. And I think just by exercising regularly, it really builds my back muscle, which helps with my sitting and standing posture. So in the past, I always thought that standing up straight and sitting up straight took a lot of effort. And after a while, I would be very tired. And now, after a period of regular exercise, I can really feel that my back has strengthened and it's now a lot easier for me to maintain this upright posture. So if any of you guys have not been exercising, I definitely highly recommend that because, you know, facial attractiveness is very subjective, but having a hot body is universal. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is I often get this question about how people can't breathe when they mew. Uh, and I have the same problem. And I think I found the solution. So basically, when you lift up your tongue to the palate and create almost like a vacuum with your tongue and your palate, so basically there's no air in between, then in that case, you're not going to be able to breathe. But the thing that matters the most uh, when you're mewing is that the posterior third of your tongue is pushing up your soft palate. 
So your palette consists of like a hard palette and a soft palette. So what you want is the back of your tongue to be pushing up at your soft palette. If anything before that, you can give it some like wiggle room. You can let the air to flow through it. You can relax the first half of your tongue a little bit so that you can actually get air in and out. That's basically how I do it. Just uh, focus on the lift in the root of your tongue and uh, let, let air go through the crevices. Hope that helps. Uh, again, I'm really not an expert. If you think what I'm saying is wrong, then leave a comment down below. I would like to be educated. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and I will see you in the next one. Bye.